Thank you. Good evening to all of you. I need to introduce myself. My name is Raul Martinez. I am the father of the real Raul Martinez. Uh, and, and, no longer, and the husband of? And the husband of Angela. Of course. And I, I want to thank all of you for inviting me. And I'm a little bit rusty on political events, not on radio and not on YouTube. So, and I guess, you know, I could probably say it, that I am probably the oldest person in this room. Probably. I can guarantee you that I am the oldest person in this table. <laughs> and I can tell you that I am probably the oldest person involved in the Democratic Party in Dade County. I go back to 1970, 1970, 69, actually, when I started, and I was not even a resident or a citizen. No, I was a resident. I was not a citizen of the United States. But my dear friend, may God have him next to him, Maurice Ferre, introduced me to politics when I was 19 years old. And ever since, I've been involved in politics all my life. So I came here, and I can tell you a lot about Cuba. I did visit in 2016, and it's so interesting that I went. And out of all the people that have gone to Cuba that have been known, the other side never attacked me. They never did. I've never changed party, and they don't attack me. Why? Because I know how to hit back. I don't let anybody define me. I define myself. And I would challenge anyone on the other side, if they want to talk about politics, if they want to talk about the Democratic Party, and if they want to talk about the original conservative Republicans, the Carlos Sandman, the Alicia eh, Casanova, Jose, Jose Manuel Casanova, Duro Evia, all of them. I can talk about the Republicans that then became Democrats, like Lincoln Diaz Ballard, Ileana Roosevelt, and all of them. So if they want to discuss politics in Miami, let's do it. I'm game. If they want to talk about Cubans and how the Democratic Party betrayed the Cubans because of the Bayo Pixination, that is a lie. It is a big lie because the people that got us involved and lied about it were the Republicans. Why D. Eisenhower? They knew we could not win. Not at that time in Cuba, where 95% of the public was still supportive of the revolution. So let's get off that. Listen. All right? Now, let's get to Miami. They keep saying, oh, I had to leave the Democratic Party because of the way you fix it. Oh! Oh! Ask Alfredo Duran. Mayo Pix, better. Ask Fernando Puigu, may God have him in, in, in peace. Talk about Manolo Reboso, who's still alive. Let's talk about the people that began in the Democratic Party and we challenged them. They started changing the Republicans when Nixon took office. Because Nixon lived in people's game. And so he started entertaining the Cubans and started creating the handouts, the little tumbes. You know, everybody get paid and everybody whatever, and, and that's how it starts. They want to debate that? I'm gay. You want to talk about names? I'm gay. So don't be afraid to say I'm a Democrat. I proudly say I'm a Democrat. I could have changed too. Ronald Reagan asked me to change party. He asked me to go to the White House and change. And I said, Mr. President, I would do it when you free Cuba. And he said to me, oh, we're doing a lot. I said, you still got the Marines? Oh man, stay as a Democrat. He was a quick guy. So if they want to tell stories and they want to talk about all the achievements, who allowed the Cubans in? Who gave the Cuban Adjustment Act? Who helped the Cubans in Camarioca? Who helped the Cubans in the freedom flights? Who helped the Cubans with the Baceros, with 
uh, 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 Marie. And every single time, we've got to remind them. Humans have a tendency. Humans have a tendency to be very short-sighted and short-minded. And I'm going to use something that a dear friend of mine, a mayor of La Capital in La República Dominicana, Feo Subrevi. My dear friend Vicente knew him very well, knows him very well. He went to pick me up. I was mayor of the city. And he picked me up at the airport. And I said, Feo, you're doing a major highway improvement. And he says, no, we're not. I said, what do you mean you're not? Look at that sign. It's a billboard. It's 20 feet by 20 feet. He says, no, we're just fixing a pothole. I said, but the pothole is smaller than the sign. He says, yeah, but I want them to know that I am fixing the sign. <laughs> and you know what? Since that time, I thought I knew it all. Not a single pothole was fixed without my name being a fixed Because <laughs> I want people to know, and that's why you got to remind people all the time. Who got you here? Who's helping you? When you get that social security? I'm not going to sell any Bibles. You imagine me saying Bibles? I'm not going to say any of that. What I can tell you is that what I promised the people of Hialeah, I delivered. I promised and I delivered. That's what we have to do. But don't let them define you. You need to define yourself and you need to tell your story and you need to define your story. I don't care whether it's Carlos Hipotea, that means Carlos Jimenez. Why Hipotea? Because if you look at him, he does just like a turtle. He moves like this. And when he does that, it's because it's getting to think because he's lying. I know. Maria Elvira, I know her. I don't know And any other, the Diaz Ballard, or Diaz Bailar, as I call him. That's how I call him, and I call him every day. Marquito del Parquecito. I call him that. I don't give it if it's said it. Because I can tell you the story of how he became Speaker of the House. And it was a Democrat that had been put in there. I now feel bad that I did it. But who would have known? I helped a lot of Republicans because back then, we were all friends. It didn't matter what side of the aisle you were in. We all got together. After a terrible battle, we would go and have a coffee at Donuts or a drink at the bar, and we wanted the best for the public. But if you let them define you, then you're behind the eight You define who you are, you tell them what you want to do, and then you tell them what they're not doing. You know what they're not doing? Telling people the truth. They're not willing. I remember in the case of Carlos Jimenez, he was not Jimenez, he was Jimenez when he was in the fire department. He became fire chief because the president of the union did not want to be fire chief. Who told me the story? The guy that appointed him, Cesar Ovi. See, we go back and we know the stories, but the, the stories need to be told every day. And dealing with the Cuban people in Cuba, you know, I wasn't the mayor of Guanabacoa or Mariana or something other. I was the mayor of Hialeah. And I needed to do good for the city of Hialeah so then the people in Cuba would want to come and visit me. And they would knock on the door and say, we want to see the mayor. And my secretary said, there's somebody from Cuba that would like to see you. Okay, let me finish whatever I was doing. Let him in. And they would come in and they would say, oh, you don't have any bodyguards? You don't have any bodyguards? No, I don't. Why do I need bodyguards? You're going to come kill me? No, no, sit down. Let's talk. <laughs> And something interesting, when I went to Cuba in 2016, there were a lot of people that knew me. And they knew me because of the television programs, the paquete, little UPS, whatever they were selling in Cuba. I would be on the show, and they would stop me on the streets. Now, if I was in Cuba, and I saw the kind of representation that we have in the United States today, where nobody cares about insurance, rent hikes, and all of this stuff, shit, I don't want to be part of those people. I don't want them coming in and telling me what to do with Cuba. We better fix this place before we can fix any place else. Thank you. Lourdes, I hope, I hope I did okay. <laughs>